guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video in the Hartley Greenhouse. Yay. It's so exciting to be in here doing this kind of video. Like we were so excited to specifically get to sit in here where it's comfortable and chat with you guys. And that's what we're doing today. Isn't that crazy? It's been a long time coming. It has been a long time coming. Maybe one day we'll get the gardens planted around it. What do no, you think? You no, think it'll ever happen? No, it'll kind of feels it'll like stay, it's not going to happen. It'll stay point. dirt for years. <laughs> it feels like it has been, in in a way. You guys know how that goes when projects kind of string out a little longer than you would kind of hope for them to be strung out. But it, you know, eventually yeah. we'll get there. Uh, anyway. Let's jump into the videos from last week. The first one was a cut flower garden update, plus making a flower arrangement. And I really wanted to get out there and show you how things were doing mid-September. Well, is it mid-September? It is mid-September. Yeah. <laughs> and specifically, I wanted to talk about the Lysianthus because the crop just like all of a sudden looked amazing. And it was one of those that I struggled with this year. I mean, you plant the seeds in January. It's a long time until you plant them out, which is usually May. I didn't get mine out until the end of June, maybe the beginning of July. They just looked so bad, and I thought it was a lost cause. Russell, what are you doing in here? Okay, I just put Russell outside. I'm not ready to let any cats be in here. Not yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> they sleep on all the furniture outside, and they get it so gross. You guys, cat hair, animal hair. Hmm, it's one of those things, so I'm just not ready for it in here. Yeah. This is like my sacred no cat space. <laughs> well, I don't blame you for for a little while. It's kind of like when you get a new car or yeah. something. It's like it's Nobody sacred. Eats in here. <laughs> yeah, it's sacred for a little while, and then after you know somebody dings it, and you're like, okay, well, we we can eat in here now. Nobody better ding the Hartley. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I can't remember where I was at except for we looked at the Lysianthus, and then I just kind of showed you around in the space, and then we cut a few buckets of flowers and made a big glorious arrangement. Which actually this morning I just picked it up and put it outside and I picked another one I don't know if you can see it I've got raspberries and dahlias can you see that behind me oh uh, yeah anyway it's back there I just posted a little thing on Instagram showing it it's really cute and a more appropriate size for the table because you can see over the top of it so that will go back over here when we're done filming uh, Mike said, where do you get those cabinets? Sorry if this has been answered before, but some lazy skimming I did not see. <laughs> um, those I ordered from Wayfair, which I don't, I think that's the first and only thing I've ever ordered from Wayfair. There's a lot of stuff on there. I was looking yeah. for file cabinets the other day. Uh -huh. Surprised by how many things are on Wayfair. Yeah. Like expensive things, cheap things, mm -hmm. they kind of have it all. They do. And I was a little worried because, you know, those cabinets have glass fronts and they were obviously shipped to us. And I thought, oh, please let those glass fronts come in intact. And they did a super great experience. So, yeah. and I really like them. They actually lived in our house for almost a year before <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I put them out, out there. And I kind of miss them being in the house now. Got to get a couple more. <laughs> Frida said, it's beautiful. A question, do you have to stage parts of your home before doing a video? I ask because I have children in the same ages as yours and their toys and stuff are everywhere all the time. Same, same for us. When I do a flower arrangement, it's hard to enjoy it with all the crap, <laughs> sorry, surrounding it. There's not enough time in the world to keep up while working full time. I, I feel you. I actually thought about doing a little story last night to show you all the laundry I like made it through a bunch of laundry yesterday and it was last night late. The kids were both in, asleep and I just kind of looked at, around the room and all these piles of laundry I had to fold. And I thought, I don't know, I wanted somebody to commiserate with me yeah. <laughs> over all the laundry. But you know, it's just life. It, it is how it is. I do try my best to keep on top of picking up the clutter. The kids are pretty good about, you know, you kind of get them involved in picking up their stuff. But I mean, it's multiple times a day. Yeah. I mean, they can get stuff out in like two minutes. The whole space is like wrecked again. Yeah. So it's especially, it's not difficult, but like when I want to bring anything inside into the kitchen and do any kind of cooking with you guys, I kind of take a look around. I don't clean anything uh, necessarily, and I don't mind if there are a few toys out, but if it's like a bomb disaster, I'll go through and kind of pick up a little bit. And that's just how it is. You know, I don't necessarily want to share, share like the disaster with, <laughs> with yeah. everybody. Um, but anyway, yeah. I think uh, when it comes to staging, like if we do a garden tour or something, we do try to pick days where things are like semi picked up or the lawn has been mm -hmm. mowed or, you know, things like yeah. that. It's kind of like putting your best foot forward, not fake, but just kind of like, well, let's shoot it on, you know, the An day overcast with day. Uh, overcast day, like the best yeah. lighting or like I said, the lawn being mowed or 
um, you know, we'll try to like blow off sidewalks and stuff. Yeah. So those kinds of things. But yeah. I feel like that's pretty normal. Like we don't do like days of prepare, pre- preparation in yeah, order to do right. anything. It's just like a quick 10 minute. Can we make this any better? Yeah. Sort of a thing. Or even 15 minutes, like whatever you can get done in 10, 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Pam said the floral arrangement with the tomatoes is so beautiful and unique. Uh, you are so gifted. Thank you, Pam. Did you have any formal training in arranging? I did not, but I have a mom who is really good at arranging. And um, she, I, mean, I think it was just like so many years of watching what she did and, you know, obvious instruction from her and just watching, just watching for me mm-hmm. is huge. I'm such a visual learner uh, that I think I just picked up stuff. And I, there's still a lot of times I put together an arrangement. And I'm like, nope, missed it. <laughs> I missed it with this one, but I'll enjoy the flowers. It's fine. Um, and then every once in a while, I'll put one together that I'm like, oh, that's, you know, I really enjoy that. I like the shape of that. So sometimes you hit it and sometimes you don't. Sue said, have you dried Lysianthus before? I have heard it dries well. Mm, I'm going to try it this fall. Thanks for all you do and share. I've not tried that, and I think I should. I wonder, do you dry it, like, hanging upside down, or do you dry it in, like, the silica sand or the silica gel? be kind of interesting to try it both ways. Blake said, I love everything about the South Garden and Cut Flower Shed space. Question, if I pay for YouTube premium, do you still get compensated for me watching your videos even though I don't see ads? I know it's not much, but I feel like I'm contributing by being a faithful watcher, and you are, no matter what. I don't know what the difference. Yeah, we do, and it is actually, I think, one of the highest uh, ways we get paid. Like, YouTube separates it Uh as, like, different, and um, I think... So yeah, like I think YouTube charges nine ninety nine a month, mm-hmm. and you get access to videos with no ads, uh-huh. which I I pay for because we're on YouTube so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually disabled it a while back just to see what YouTube was like with mm-hmm. the ads, and I was like, nope, don't like <laughs> it's this. It's not, not worth. <laughs> if you spend a lot of time on it, then it is probably worth ten bucks a month yeah. to get rid of all that. Extra and I am um, I, I try to keep tabs on a lot of stuff. I don't like watch people's videos all the way through necessarily, mm-hmm. but like in the gardening space, I try to keep sort of an eye on on what people. You don't spend any time at all. I don't doing watch that. anyone on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I have to stay in my own brain space. I don't want to see, well, even, it doesn't even have to do with gardening, but like, I just want to not have a bunch of outside influence on me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just want whatever I'm doing to be the natural flow of what our life holds. And what you want to be doing. And what I want to be doing. And not what you're influenced by other people. Yeah, I don't want to be influenced by trends or anything like that. I'm just simply doing what I'm doing in the garden today because that's what I need to do. Well, I think... I think you and I make a pretty good team in that way because I think that you hold the creativity to, to like come up with ideas and I kind of just keep tabs on the the way that YouTube is sort of flowing and maybe like the way that videos should be shot or, or things like that. And then you're the one that kind of like does it. You know what I mean? You just need like a little push in the right direction and then you're just kind of an animal to get stuff done. Hmm. I don't know about that, but you get a lot of stuff done. I got a lot of stuff to do today after we're done <laughs> with this video. It's so nice. I'm just trying to trying to squeeze in as much as I can during these days, and it's getting darker so much earlier, like at seven, yeah. seven thirty. Oh my goodness! We're it's getting weird. a lot more overcast days too. Yeah. In the summer, it's just a hundred percent sun. Yeah, it's like just brutal, unforgiving. I unrel- feel like our plants would do s- so much better if like a third of the days right. we had a little bit of cloud cover yeah would that, wouldn't that be nice i don't know i don't know what that's imagine like imagine living somewhere where they have cloud cover imagine i see other garden tours like in england mm-hmm. and it's like the sun never comes out like every time they're filming a video it's just like a nice overcast of course they probably are sick of it they're like yeah. oh why can't the sun come out but all their plants look lush and you ever nice notice people and... say they're going to go on vacation to somewhere like sunny and warm and we're like why are you serious <laughs> why would you sunny do and that? warm yeah i've never been super we went to the caribbean once on mm-hmm. a cruise in the middle of the winter in january and that was that was nice because yeah. we left like a three week we'd already been underneath this three week inversion it was just like couldn't see the sky it was just fog and cold and damp like it was just ugh. Um, it wasn't like a nice layer of snow that was really pristine it was like mud right. mud and ice and gross and we left and i remember when we got into miami i'm like oh it feels yeah. so good but yeah, most of the time, I don't think I've ever really been interested in vacationing warm, like beaches and things like that. No. Like, let's go to Alaska. But you're kind of a thing. during like January, that's the one yeah. time where it's kind of like, yeah, that might be nice. Mm-hmm. But in our summer here, like the thought of going somewhere warm, 
No, thank you. Relax. <laughs> yeah. 603 Stitcher said, this is beautiful. How long do you think the tomatoes will last? Well, they're still going for it. I'm going to actually pick some of them and use them inside from that arrangement. I think I had to toss two out of all of the ones that were hanging out of that arrangement. Two of them got a little bit soft. They got away from me. But uh, yeah, you can use all that produce right out from when you're done with the arrangement. Denise said, do you as a family ever go on vacation away from it all? I hear it's a good thing. Um, you know... No. No. <laughs> we haven't for a while. You know, we focus a lot on creating what we love here at our home, which we have a, a ways to go to button some stuff up. Um, and so that's always kind of been a, a thing for us. I don't know. We used to go. We've been to England a couple of times. and Before kids. Before kids. We kind of like when YouTube took off for us, um, we kind of... Like stayed just, home. We stayed home because we were both working full-time jobs and doing YouTube on the side for mm -hmm. two years before we actually went full-time. And then when we went full-time, we had just bought this house. Mm -hmm. Had no money left. Like we That's were, true, yeah. We were like scraping it, you know, mm -hmm. for a while. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. There's just like those little things yeah. that just kept happening. And we had Benjamin. Yeah. And then and we became hermits. Yeah. Like we can't wreck his nap time. We can't, you know what I mean? We're not good traveling with kids. No, we're not. We're not good going anywhere with kids. We're getting better. We are getting better, but I still, when I look at other people, but other people don't look like they're always having fun with kids either. <laughs> like I see other kids and or other people with kids and I'm like, I don't know if I want that for myself because it, it looks like stressful. I, it looks stressful. <laughs> it looks like a ton of work to take kids places. Mm -hmm. I mean, little kids, like a, like a one year old like babies. Yeah. Babies. Yeah. We're actually taking the kids to the zoo this weekend and we're yeah. really excited because Samantha's at a point where she's like, she'll st still take a really good afternoon nap. So we're going to leave first thing in the morning and maybe be back in time for that. I have a feeling she's going to go to sleep in the car though on the mm -hmm. way home because of all the activity the stimuli but i think we're like just on the cusp of you know really being able to get the kids out it's the mm -hmm. whole nap time thing and we just we i mean kids need that if Our you kids don't give, are so well behaved with yeah, a nap time yeah and i feel like so many parents now i'm not judging any parents here but i feel like when kids are misbehaving when our kids are misbehaving i always think are they fed are they tired? Are they, you know, all of these things, like what am I in control of here that possibly didn't happen for my child that's right. making them, them be like this? Because a lot of times it's not really them, it's something like they're just worn out. Yeah. Um, and so- it's something you probably should have provided for your kids. Yeah, so that's one of those things that, like nap time has kind of been a sacred time. And it helps us with our sanity too because everybody's happy most yeah. of the time. And well behaved Right. most of the time. Everybody has their moments, including myself. Yeah. I'll, I will say, though, you can see, I think Benjamin really was just like an angel child. He was. Oh, he was such a good kid. He still is. Yeah. But yeah. And then I think we got a glimpse with Samantha. I, I still think she's a good good kid, mm -hmm. but I she's so much harder. She's strong And I wells. wonder if, you know, if we weren't um, kind of diligent with nap times and making sure that she got fed and yeah. nap times at the right time, I wonder if she would be even more of a problem child. Maybe. I mean, I mean, she's not a problem child, but she's just not the same as Benjamin. Yeah. <laughs> she's, a, she's just a unique, unique She's like more strong-willed and like cares less about what you think. Yeah. Yes. I, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be interesting with her, but she's also a like cuddly. Yeah. Like, she's the sweetest. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. This morning was the first time I walked into her room and I said, good morning. And she went, morning. Yeah. Like said it back to me. Oh, I loved it. Okay. Next video is planting shrubs with blue and lavender slash lavender blooms and repotting African violet babies. I actually set out that day just to do garden maintenance and I did really no garden maintenance <laughs> that day. I mean like pruning and cutting back and things like that. Um, but we had these beautiful Rosa Sharon I wanted to plant and then also the Caryopteris, the Beyond Midnights. I just didn't even, I knew it. we had them out there and I drove by them and I was just like, Oh my gosh, those are gorgeous. You guys need to see them when they're at the peak bloom. So we got those planted. And then I remembered the African violet babies was kind of hot that day. And mm -hmm. I thought oh, something in the studio might be kind of nice. And I needed to repot those. They're doing well. So yay. Uh, Susan said off the subject, but when planting a proven winners, pinky winky standard in fall, what are your recommendations for soil amendments? If any are needed for zone six, we just use biotin starter fertilizer all the time. Some people will say don't use any amendments at all. Just do native soil. Proven Winners says no amendments. Yeah, Proven Winners does say no amendments. They also garden. Okay, the people at Proven Winners, they're, they know a lot. Yeah. Like, they're smart. Yes. They're not dumb. But they also garden in Michigan. And I feel like it's such an easy place to garden. 
they that, probably beg to differ. There's everybody. Yeah, they, they have would. Japanese Beatles. We do, and not. they're I smart. Mean, like everybody like we talk to, yeah. like they know their stuff. But when they say no amendments, I'm just like, but does have that you seen our soil? Yeah, or like, our pH. Well, and some people's soil is even worse than ours. Yeah. You know, so it, it's kind of like I feel like you in some areas you do need amendments. You know what I think the best thing you can do is to find somebody in your local area who has a beautiful garden. I mean, maybe you know them already, but ask them what they do. What are your standard practices for planting? When do you fertilize? What do you use? Because I think you can glean so much information because they're dealing with similar things as you. Um, like, you know, we're kind of a, an area all our own here, as you guys are in your areas, you know. So I grew up, you guys have seen my parents' garden. I grew up watching my parents use uh, the root stimulator mm -hmm. every, every week for, or every two weeks. I can't even remember now. I haven't been using root stimulator for a little while, but it was a thing. Like you use root stimulator when you plant and then every, I think it was every week for a certain amount of weeks and then compost. It's like a 50, 50 blend native soil to compost when you backfill around your plant. But like other people will say no amendments at all, no compost. You're going to wreck with the soil chemistry and all mm -hmm. of that kind of thing. But I'm like, but look at my parents garden. Like, yeah, it's pretty nice, you know? So you learn different things about your area from people who do it. I think that's the best the best way to learn. Well, and you start to learn about your soil specifically. Like ours is high pH, so throwing some soil acidifier is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. We can have some hard clay areas, mm -hmm. so throwing in some gypsum can be a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, adding a little bit of compost too because of the the hard. So you but if you have already have fluffy soil and you're it's already you know basic sort of mm -hmm. like neutral mm -hmm. then some of those things you probably don't need right it's so individual yeah is that the right word yeah yeah uh kirsten asked are the hibiscus good as a cut flower or do the blooms die back too quickly uh they, they die back too quickly most of them only last a day to a few days at best mikey said my question is who would be upset about you killing an earwig <laughs> oh i'm sure those people exist out there and you know there's there are some, I guess, good qualities about earwigs. Like they do eat dead and like decaying matter, like leaves and stuff like that. But then they'll also eat your plants too. They're not like, if I see them, they're not a good thing. I don't want to keep them around. I don't think most people do. And they're those things like, we haven't dealt with them in our house. Thank the Lord. But growing up, we always had them in the house and they like dark, damp areas. Mm -hmm. So like if you put your towel on, like you would use your towel the night before you take a shower, morning before, whatever. And then you'd hang it on the hook and then like right around the hook where it's kind of bunched up, it doesn't always dry out completely. So you use it the next day and there might be a couple of earwigs in there. So if you don't check, then ooh, you go earwigs on yourself and that's so gross. One time I had, um, I found an earwig in my over the ear headphones and I felt something crawling on my ear like earwig crawling on your ear oh uh, your mom sucked one up through a straw once Ooh. yeah I check every straw now like that really yeah <laughs> like I never thought of that as a thing oh <gasps> I would die oh yuck Lynn said I just found your channel and love it I just watched an old video from last spring can you please tell me where you get your beautiful black tomato cages uh those are from gardener's supply they're the titan Titan tomato cages. I think there's a large and a small size and they've held up really well for us. Now, the really cool thing about them, um, is that, I mean, I thought they're pla like a heavy duty plastic, but when you have, especially the tall ones, they come apart. So like the long poles that go down to the ground, those come off the rings so that you can bundle them all together, put all your rings together and they store flat. Tomato frames are really hard to store when they don't collapse in any way. So that's a really good thing about them. And I thought because they kind of tend to feel a little bit flimsy, they're not. They hold these huge, giant tomato plants in place. And we had some pretty fierce winds around yeah, here. Do. And they just, they hang on. Um, the only part about them that's a little bit hard is that you can't grab the top because they're not connected like welded together you can't push down from the top to get them down into your soil mm. and we have such a hard pan out there i have to, to aug holes we're all so i set the frame where I, right where i want it and kind of sh like do this to where it makes a little mark in the soil and then i can see where i need to aug my sure. holes and then i can slide the frame right down in that's the way it works the best for us Aaron said, I know African violets like to be a little root bound and mine started to bloom again when I moved it back into a smaller pot. My question is, how do you know when it's time to move it up for a bigger pot? Is it different from other plants? Most of the time you don't need to do it unless you notice some kind of a stress issue. 
I mean, I think it's standard practice to check your plants once a year, once every couple of years. Some plants don't need to be repotted though, like, but every four or five years. But I kind of just am of the mindset of if, if it's going great, don't mess with it. If you start seeing it like maybe stop blooming and it hasn't bloomed for a long time, or like if you notice some yellowing or whatever of some leaves, then you might check the roots and see what's going on. Might be time for a repot. Sandra said, what will you do with all those baby violets? Give them away? That's a lot of violets to take care of. Yes, I won't keep all of those violets. I'm gonna keep hold of them to make sure that they grow. Once they put on some size, I'll give them away to friends and family. I'll keep a few though. I kinda wanna wait until they grow up enough to bloom so I can kinda pick out like, okay, I got a pink one, a white one, a purple one, and make sure I have all the colors and then the rest can go. Next video is rooting tomato suckers and planting tomato seeds plus more fall crops. So I went out and got some cuttings. I cut some suckers out of um, a few of my favorite tomato varieties and we got them potted up in some damp soil. They're all doing pretty good so far. Uh, and then I started a tray of seeds as well so that we could hopefully try out some more winter production in the uh, plastic greenhouse that we are now heating. Um, I don't know though, cause we just kept enough heat in there to keep the edge off. Mm -hmm. We didn't keep it like warm enough for tomatoes necessarily. Right. So we're just gonna have to do a little experimenting and see what happens. It may not work. I might have to set up like a greenhouse within a greenhouse, like bubble something else in there, like some fabric or something to hold even more heat in. I'm not sure, I've thought about a few different things we could do. And then we planted more fall crops in the raised bed um, after I replaced some drip. I had to replace some drip that was not working properly. Cecilia said, I was so impressed that you have your drip system on your cell phone. Would you or Aaron explain how to set it up? Well, we didn't set, we didn't like install that part of it. I hooked up the, it's called Ratio. Um, you can go to Home Depot and buy it. Rainbird sells them. It's just a sprinkler timer, except for one of the zones is not a sprinkler. It's the vegetable garden. Mm -hmm. So that part of it, I didn't set up. Like Benny hooked that part up. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, they're like 150 bucks or well so. Well spent. Yeah. Honestly, the not having to run and back back and forth to the box because our box is like in the stairwell leading down into our basement and it's through a couple of different doors, but you have to go into the house and unlock those doors from the inside first. It's just so squirrely. So running back and forth to check a drip zone, especially if it's not right next to the house is such a pain. I remember me standing by the box on on my phone talking to you. Yeah. Like, okay, turn it on. In the I early turn days. It on. Okay, turn it off. I turn it off and you just have to stand there while you were making repairs right. and things like that. Now you can make your repair and just turn it on and see if it works. If it does great, you know, you don't have to do anything extra. Also, you can turn it on when you're not here. So if you're, we're off doing something and you think, oh, it's especially hot today. I think, you know, I just planted some seeds. Maybe they need a little extra water. I can just get on and turn on that zone and it'll, it'll run. So nice. Uh, Elizabeth said, do you think you're doing a grid or closed loop with the quarter inch tubing would help with the coverage in the raised bed? Asking because I was considering doing mine this way for fall crops. Um, I don't think doing a grid or a close because I did kind of couple in in lots of different areas and multiple of the beds trying to connect the water back to each other and none of it like I, I um, closed in the loop as well like there was no ender I hooked it back into itself and it wasn't helping it's just too long of a run of that quarter inch so having that header line I don't know if that's what you call it mm -hmm. yeah but you have the bigger line of water a distribution line distribution line and then coupling off of that and doing shorter runs of quarter inch that has so far worked so much better did you um forgive me i didn't watch that part of the video but did you do a half inch line and then come quarter yeah. inch off that okay yeah. yeah so instead of doing four rows six foot so 24 feet of quarter inch it would work really good in the beginning part of the run and then toward the end there was no water left like it wouldn't make it to the end um now we've got a half inch that goes the three foot width of the bed and then i did four runs of six foot yeah quarter inch and it just works beautifully i still think in the end the best way to run it would be to use drip tape well probably well, it's definitely i think next year we should set it up with drip tape and you can bury that mm -hmm. the the reason i leave this drip tubing on top is i'm a little gun shy because yeah. we've had so much of it malfunction and plug and stuff and then all of a sudden you think well that crop isn't looking very good yeah and you realize it's not getting water and it's easy to test when you can see all the drip tape but we've used drip or drip line when we use we've used so much drip tape now though out in the big cut flower garden and it works so well yeah that i'm a little bit more confident in that I think one of the things that helps with the drip tape is that um, the emitter holes are on top. Mm -hmm. And so when it fills up, all the sediment stays at the bottom mm -hmm. and it just weeps out over the top. Mm -hmm. Whereas this stuff, there's a, is there one or two on each side? Emitter holes. Either way, sure. a lot of times they just seem to get plugged up. And I don't yeah. know if they're plugged up from sediment or plugged up from 
hard water. Right. It could be a combination of both. Yeah. Anne said, I've noticed in a number of videos of the raised beds that the soil has a lot of insects crawling around. How do you deal with the insects that feed on plant leaves when you organically garden food crops? I don't do really anything in that space. I mean, except we did spray some BT on our cabbage. And no, nah, did we do it on broccoli this year? Maybe. And BT is Bacillus thuringiensis, which is a bacteria, bacteria naturally found in soil. Um, so it's 100% natural, and it's something that a caterpillar has to ingest to die, and it doesn't affect any other pollinators. I do a lot with trap crops in there. Like, I've got a whole bed full of calendula, so I don't deal with aphids on anything else because it just attacks my calendula. Um, in terms of other bugs in there, I mean, we've got, like, the little roly-polies. Um, mm -hmm. There's worms all over in those raised beds, and that's pretty much it. I might find the occasional ant, but I don't bait for any of those things. I just let them do their thing. If you want to organically treat, like earwig stuff, you can use the bug and slug killer. It's like a spinosad based, I think, right? A spinosad based um, granulated thing that you can spread. Tony said, do spider mites stay in the ground? They can in egg form. Uh, the adults will die during the winter and I'm kind of hoping, I've heard we're gonna have a tough winter, like a super cold one with lots of snow. I'm like, please. That was the farmer's almanac says? Uh, I don't know, but I've just, you hear those rumblings every single year and I'm really hoping we do because we've had so many mild winters in a row. The spider mites this year have been the worst they've ever been and eggs can harbor over in the soil um, and come back the next year. And if we have a really hard winter, it kills off a lot of, a lot more of those. And we usually have a better year for mosquitoes and all of those kinds of things. Um, so yeah, spider mites are the worst though. I think next year we're gonna try the predatory mites. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna take it that route instead of spraying, hopefully at all, it'd be awesome. Because you can't do the predatory mites and, and then spray, spray. No. because then you're killing the predatory right. mites. But if we can release beneficials, do some trap crops or host plants for other like it's, aphids and stuff. It sounds like um, the key is to release them at the exact correct time. Yeah. Because if you do it too early, there's not enough for them to feed on. And then they just go away, look, they either die or they're looking for something to eat mm -hmm. somewhere else. Oh, they'll find, I'm sure they'll find plenty. If you wait here. too long, though, then you've already kind of like lost some plants or yeah. there's some damage yeah. maybe. Although maybe it wouldn't be that bad because a lot of times you see the mites and they really haven't caused a ton of damage. You just see the mites and a bunch of webbing. It's when it gets hot, like really hot. Yeah. That's when they flourish and that's kind of when their population booms and then you see a bunch of damage. Yeah. All of a sudden. It'll be really interesting to see mm -hmm. how it goes. The garden cat said, oh no, what's going on with the arborvitae in the vegetable garden? The back looks all brown. Did they get sprayed with something from the new construction? Mine are struggling too and I'm curious what they're doing for them. We think it's a water issue, so they are struggling. And mm -hmm. I think they did this a little bit last year. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we didn't think to. I think it's a water issue because the rest of the arbs, from one side of the vegetable garden toward the greenhouse and the other side of the vegetable garden all the way down, perfectly green. And it's because they're all getting water from something else. Like they have an individual drip line going to each one of those arborvitaes. Um, but the, you know, the west side flower beds, it's full of drip. Mm -hmm. So it's getting, and it kind of slopes down. There's so those inevitably arbs, a little bit of yeah, and runoff from there. The other ones are right next to the lawn, which you're getting some of that overspray from the lawn sprinklers. The raised beds are getting nothing from anything else. So they're only getting the little bit of water, which I haven't rooted around to see if they're plugged. No, they're not. We've checked. They're, oh, you have. Yeah. So we have run a second line, I think, mm -hmm. or we're running second line the next couple of days. We're going to run a second line along those arbs and or pop in extra emitters in mm -hmm. the current line. It's probably the easier way to go about it, except for we can take that extra line out if we figure that the arbs are recovered and right. I don't know. Anyway, we just need to give them more water. I think it's just a, a water issue. Yeah. Unfortunately. I've heard that uh, arbs really do want a decent amount of water and they also are shallow rooted. Hmm. So they don't really necessarily need deep soaks. They, they don't just go looking for water anymore. They just need constant, mm -hmm. yeah, constant water. And the unfortunate part is that we didn't notice it until it's like advanced because we don't see that side yeah. of the arborvitas. Our poor neighbors right behind us, they're probably like, don't get any advice from those people. Look at yeah. their arborvita hedge. Next video is gathering supplies to decorate my parents' house for fall, plus planting perennials for summer from summer pots. So I had to go all over the place gathering stuff, especially for a decorating project. It takes forever. It's like a whole day spent yeah. gathering because you don't want to start off in the project and then have to stop and go get some random supply. Um, so whew, you see that? No. It's like I sucked a feather up my nose. Where'd oh, that serious? come from? <laughs> yeah. Whew. Anyway, maybe it was one of my hairs. I don't know. <laughs> 
Anyway. What made you think it was a feather? Well, it kind of looked white. Oh. In my, like, peripheral vision. Are you going gray? I don't think so. Really? <laughs> Not too much. <laughs> um, I don't know where I was at. Oh, yeah. So I gathered supplies for that. And then when we got home, and it was a blustery day, but we got a couple of lavender plants and the honeyberries planted that were in front of the greenhouse out in the south garden. So they'll be happy campers, especially those sad looking honeyberries. Did you see those? They look like sticks. Yeah. At this point, I don't know exactly what happened to them except for the drip. I don't know that it was functioning 100% or maybe they didn't have enough. Uh, but, you know, a few of our things uh, tend to do that. Like you just kind of, something gets away from you. But there's a ton of life left in those and I cut them back, planted them out. They should be fine. Beth said, I'm in Indiana and everyone has mums out already. We have 90 degree weather this weekend. I find our mums die off quickly too. Is there another fall plant that you like that give off the fall color? I tend to like to use a lot of cabbage and kale ornamental. I like to use pansies and violas. And then I like to use a lot of like grass accents. Um, so Hakana Chloe and um, Acaris, they both have really pretty pretty yellow color. Um, I also will uh, tuck in crotons. Like you can get them like right now. I don't know what it is. Maybe because the crotons kind of have those autumnal colors, but they bring them in and they're fairly cheap and you can get them and tuck them in. I just kind of treat them as annuals and let them die with all the rest of the annuals in the pots, but they do last for a long time and add a lot of color. Um, boy, what other ones? There's also asters. Um, and asters tend to have, to me, the bloom life is a little bit longer, but you don't get kind of like the reds and the, the bronze and the same colors as you do in the mums. And those mum colors, they are pretty. And I just wish, I wish they were longer lasting. I just hate to use them and then have kind of this like brown looking or just no color looking plant for the rest of the fall season. Just Anonymous said, do you have to dig up all of the dahlias for storage during the winter months? So we are a zone six, technically, I think, or what are dahlias, like a zone eight? eight to 11 or something like that. Oh, really? I thought they were like seven. Oh, I don't know, maybe. That'd be, that bode well for us because yeah. this year we're not gonna dig them. I might dig a few of my favorites. I did order some new ones from Swan Island Dahlias this year that are like more the collarette style, which I'm loving that form um, a lot. So I might dig a few of those up just so I know that I have them, but we're gonna experiment with uh, wintering ours over in the ground, which means we're gonna be mulching them up heavily, like heavy layer of leaves and maybe grass clippings and stuff. Then we're gonna tarp them. Uh, we don't typically, I mean, we get snow and stuff, but we don't typically get like snow and snow and rain. And you know, we don't have a lot of moisture in the winter time, but I think moisture is one of your bigger concerns in mm. a lot of areas. You don't want those tubers to sit in the moisture for too long so we'll tarp them or whatever I don't know we'll put over the top of them um, something to keep the water out uh, because they don't like when I store them we put a t the tiniest bit of moisture in vermiculite and that's what we store the tubers in and I don't add any extra moisture through the entire winter mm. never so they don't get any extra they're pretty dry by the time I get them out like the vermiculite is but the tubers look great so I think if we keep them away from moisture we keep them mulched we'll see what comes back next year it just the amount of labor it takes to dig close to 400 dahlias and clean them label them get them ready for storage and then bring them back out in the winter divide them all then pack them back up so that they're ready to i just mm -mm. it would cost us less just to buy new ones right. and you know i don't really need to have that many dahlias it's awesome it's beautiful and so i thought well next year we'll experiment see how many come back and maybe we'll reduce our dahlia patch if they don't, if it's not successful, maybe we'll reduce the amount that we plant out there so we don't have as enormous of a job yeah. to do and we'll do something different. It feels like it really would only be worth it if you are uh, got like rare dahlias that you can't yeah. buy from year to right. year or something like that. Which I don't have any of those that I know yeah. of. They're all pretty standard varieties. Standard. Yeah, they're beautiful. And there's some that varieties that do sell out every single year, but they're not necessarily rare or anything. Yeah. And, you know, every once in a while, too, it'd be fun to start over with some new ones. There's so many fun, fun ones to try out. Uh, the Jilly Killy said, am I the only one who doesn't like the look of corn stalks for decorating? I'm sure everybody has different opinions on everything. I'm always, whenever we do a decorating video, I'm always kind of like, okay, I'm going to get half that like it and half that don't. Because my mom and I especially, we tend to like, we like lots of things, beautiful things. We like lots of texture and color and that kind of opulent kind of look. And there's a lot of minimalist people out there, which I like that look too. And mm -hmm. I like the, after I get done with a really busy display, I want to just like clean everything off and have one item <laughs> on that surface, you know? So I go back and forth. Uh, but yeah, everybody just has their own personal style and... Yeah, if you don't like corn stalks, don't use them. 
Heather said, I thought lavenders do not like fertilizer. It's just the Biotone starter fertilizer. I use it for everything. It helps with root development more than anything else. Um, so you could probably get away with not using it on something like that if you wanted to. But Why I would they not like fertilizer? Well, there's a lot of, like, sedum. You don't want to fertilize sedum. Brush and Yeah, sage. but that's because you don't want it to, uh, like, crack and, like, splay out in the middle. Well, it's just too much nutrient. A lot of plants don't need that. Mm. It's just too much for them. And lavenders are fairly low user, but I don't normally go along and fertilize my lavenders at any other point. I did. You did? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Which ones? Uh, this for the one in front of the, uh, the ones in front of the um, vegetable garden. Oh, they did really good this year, too. Yeah. Mm. I went through only once. I went through this spring in front. <laughs> That's why I was kind of asking. You know what? They kind of struggled last year, though, so I wonder if maybe that helped them well, out. I hopped to the water, uh -huh. and I fertilized this spring. Um, I watered every other day. Uh -huh. We had it on every third day. And I don't think I fertilized the year before either. So gotcha. I fertilized and did every other day watering as opposed to every third. They looked good. Interesting. You know, those are planted in the gravel, basically, and they get so much heat and so much yeah. just, yeah, they probably could use a little extra something. Peter said, I know you've mentioned windbreaks in the past, but could you remind us what your windbreak strategy is for your property? The subdivision next door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that has helped a little bit. Yeah. Um, we, you know, we have so many trees and stuff planted out there. We just, like, need some years to happen for them to get bigger. And we didn't plant, like, a row of anything as a windbreak. Uh, we could have, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't know how. So if you have, let's say, a one windbreak on the entire west side of our property, how much would that actually affect like, how much wind would it block from how much of the rest of the property? Yeah, I don't... Like, do you need a windbreak, and then so many acres over, you need another windbreak, and then you need another one, you know? I don't think it would do as much as the houses going in. Because the houses are pretty, like, they're solid. tall, and they're solid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I feel like that would be more of a windbreak than anything that we could do. Mm -hmm. I do think, you know, on the west side, we probably, I don't want to say messed up. But I do think that maybe we should have done taller, wider evergreens. Yeah. But at the time that we planted it, we didn't know we were going to be expanding to the no. South Garden. We didn't know we were going to get that land. Right. And so, you know, we had the 1.8 acres and we were kind of like, well, we want like kind of maximum amount of space to garden. Mm -hmm. Whereas now I think we would be like, oh, let's just fill up the west side with evergreens. Yeah. We've talked about like the raised bed garden. Should we move that? You know, should we have that back here in the, mm -hmm. the north garden space? Which still could happen, but it is a very convenient location for Close those to the house. Beds. Yeah. Like if I need to run out for a tomato quick, I can do that. Yeah. Or some herbs. Like I came out for cilantro the other night and there was some cilantro right there and it takes you two seconds instead of trucking, you know, it does make a difference. Convenience makes a huge difference. Sometimes like there's been an occasion where I needed fresh garlic and I knew there was some in the roots, root cellar, but it was like this last winter, it's cold outside. I'm like, I just have garlic powder in the, in the cupboard i'm just going to use that because right. i don't want to truck out there right now but had i you know stored it somewhere nearby or if i could store the garlic somewhere nearby where it wouldn't dry out um so quickly i'd probably use it a lot more yeah it's weird i hope i'm not the only one like that but if it's more convenient it's just natural to use it more okay last video for this week was de decorating my parents house for fall so my sister and i went out there and just spent a day helping my mom decorate for fall because of her leg breaking her leg she can't move around all that much but she likes to have a decorated house for every season and all the holidays and so didn't want her to miss out on that and it's a really fun opportunity for us just to hang out and we had a delicious lunch and dessert and it was a fun fun day it was a beautiful day uh, shannon said how do you keep the kids from getting into everything i have a one-year-old who recently broke several glass items on a family trip you know every kid is different samantha we have to be on all the time mm -hmm. right now though because i have the fall decorating tubs out here at our house and i have them um, open in the back shade porch and the kids love to be involved and i kind of <laughs> kind of just letting it roll like benjamin takes all of the artificial pumpkins and they're scattered all over our house He'll like flank a doorway with a little tiny pumpkin on the floor and another one on the other side that don't match. He'll be like, mom, doesn't this look cute? Yeah. I'm like, yes, that looks great. But he gets into it, loves rummaging through those. And this is the year where like Samantha's rummaging through too and she's kind of carrying stuff around, but I'm not worried about her swallowing anything. Mm -hmm. um, or necessarily like I would put breakable stuff away from her because she would probably break it but benjamin wasn't really like that well he did get into the uh, ornaments on the tree you remember oh 
Yes, when he was in his walker. He yeah. wasn't even one yet. And we had a tree. I ended up taking that tree down in the kitchen. It was just like a magnet for him because he could wheel on the, the kitchen floor, which he could go a lot faster on the kitchen floor. And it was all at his level. And so I ended up like putting all the ornaments up higher, but then he would still try to get them. Yeah. I remember one time I saw him come around the corner and he was looking at me like he knew. And he came over to the tree, grabbed the ornament, and then cruised as yeah. fast as he could across the kitchen he floor. <laughs> yes. Um, Because he knew he was doing something that was naughty that he shouldn't have been doing. Um, And I was trying not to laugh because of his face and how I I could see it coming and how he was trying to run from it. But that was so rare with him. But with Samantha, a little different. I'm hoping this year she stays out of the ornaments. I don't know. She might want the ornaments. I'll probably have to put more... uh, I think like she's old enough. Things. I think I think she's she's understanding. She's understanding the rules. more and more. Yeah. But still, I'll probably if there's any special ornaments, I'll probably keep them up just yeah. to kind of avoid any disaster that could happen. Uh, Jen said, "Would you do a tutorial on how you made the concrete pumpkins?" I was just telling Aaron, maybe I should revisit that. There is a video from a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. It still exists, right? I think it was the first fall. Yeah. Of our making videos. Yeah. So like 2015. So we're due for a revisit 14? on that. I don't know, but I still have forms from that time. Like I bought extra ones. I think Joanne still has similar things to that. I'll have to go look. But yeah, maybe we'll revisit that because I'd like to have a couple. They look so pretty tucked in at my parents' house. Nicole said, love every bit of this. I just had hand surgery, so I can't dig in the dirt right now, and it's killing me. I feel for your mom. Question, though, what kind of espresso maker was that? The crema looked amazing, and it was so compact. I want one. So I'm actually just drinking an eggnog latte right now. Um, It's funny because my mom, this is an Nespresso machine. My mom bought like a really fancy Nespresso machine. Like it was like one of the really nice ones and it was a total lemon. So she ended up sending it back. But I liked the idea of having something where I could do espresso based drinks that was compact and that was like, didn't take up much counter space because I've had the Breville, like the big, you know, espresso machine. They just take so much cleaning and so much room on the counter that we ended up, I think, giving that to someone. Anyway, I bought the Nespresso. I think it's a Virtuo, Virtuo Plus. Is that right? I had to buy it through Williams-Sonoma because they were the only one who had the exact system. Let me look. But I bought one of these after my mom sent hers back. And she was kind of like, ooh, we'll see. We'll see if yours works. But then she ended up buying one. um, And then my brother and his wife bought one. My family and I were such copiers. Like one of us will get something and then we think it's really neat. And then we want to have one too. I think we got one of these for your brother too. An espresso. Mm -hmm. It is perfect because you can just pour the tiniest bit of milk or like eggnog in this case. Because I love eggnog. and it just makes the perfect drink perfect size okay so this is the nespresso virtuo plus deluxe coffee maker and espresso machine with the arrochino milk frother so there's the nespresso machine with the little water reservoir and then the arrochino actually sits beside it it's a separate like you have to have a separate plug-in for that so it's two plugins um but the thing i love about the arrochino is that you put the little milk in there and push the button it heats and froths it all at once and then you just kind of like rinse it out with soapy water and dry it and then that's it like it's so easy to clean and it's so compact anyway that was a good you got that for me did you get that for me for christmas so. I think you didn't you? Did I? What did you get me that sat in the box for a while before I got it out? I only would have gotten it for you if it was something like you circled in a ma- magazine and I was just like, oh, this will this will work. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. Well, I don't drink coffee too, so it wasn't something that I would have like thought a lot about. Well, it feels like it was a gift. Maybe You're, I did. But, Maybe I did get it for you. I don't know. You know, I think I did actually. Yeah. Yeah, I think you did because you also got me some more of the glasses that I like from yeah. Williams Sonoma. You like you got me a few little things from there that I really like. You know, I still have some pictures. Whenever we go through Williams Sonoma, uh-huh. you'll you'll be like, "Oh, this is cool," and then I'll wait for you to like walk away, and I'll kind of like snap a picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome, Aaron. I didn't know you did that. I'm gonna keep an eye on you. Better. Donna said, "It's so nice seeing you and your sister working together to help your mom. Do you two get along? Did you two get along well as kids?" I think we got along pretty well. I mean, as well as any sisters would, maybe better. Um, There are three years difference between us, but we did share a room every year. All the years growing up until I moved out, we shared a room, which there was difficulties in that because, you know, one of you is usually messier, not me. 
And one one is usually a little bit more type A. Monica's pretty clean now. She though. is now. She's... But her so I'm gonna tell on her a little bit, but her idea of cleaning when she was little was either shoving every last thing under her bed to where like there was no room. Like we had bed skirts on our bed and hers would like kind of be bulging out <laughs> because of all the stuff. Or she would gather it all together in the middle of the room and just toss a blanket over the top of it. Like, done. It's all cleaned up. Nice. Um, and then there was a moment where I put tape down on the floor. Like, we're splitting this room. I am tired of your junk over on my side of the room because I was always pretty orderly and neat in my space. Um, yeah, and I was tired of the mess creeping over. She kept it on her side after that. <laughs> anyway, you know, you do the things sisters do, but we are 100% different from each other. We have, I mean, we both love to cook, uh, but cooking is her jam. That's her thing. Um, but yeah, we just are so different that we get along really well. No competition between yeah. the two of us at all. No competition on her end. No, there's no competition. I don't feel competitive with Monica at all. No. Mm -mm. But you compete with yourself. You're just like in a yeah. constant state of competition. Like, can I do this faster? How can yeah, I do this more no efficient? One. You know. Yeah. You're just like fast at everything you do. No, I think I'm just always trying to figure out how I could be faster. I suppose, at, yeah. You know, at things or whatever. But no, I never feel have felt in competition with her at all. And that's probably the healthiest <laughs> way to be, I guess. Um, Deb the Web said, was anyone trying to read the names on the books in the entryway? <laughs> I thought about that. Yeah. Um, you would probably, if you were to look at the stacks of books, you would find art books, garden books, like picture books, like beautiful coffee table books, uh, herbal, medicinal, history, healing, history. From your dad. There's some religious books in there. Um, yeah. Lots of things. They devotionals. Both, yeah. Lots of devotionals. Yeah. They both love to read, though. Like tons of tons of books in their house in fact i need to go through my dad has stacks downstairs they're kind of cleaning out uh, an area and he's like you should go through those or my mom said go through those books before we you know those stacks are going so maybe some national go. geographics mixed in oh probably my dad used to have a, had victoria, a victoria uh, magazine, uh, magazine national geographic magazine those were two my parents had while we were growing up the subscriptions yeah Catherine said, oh my gosh, your mom's arrangements are beautiful. You guys made her day. Everything looks great. What is the color of paint she has in the room where she was sitting in? So that is the Sherwin-Williams Thunder Gray. And that is the color I asked her when we moved in here. I'm like, do you mind if I use the same color? Because I love it too. If I use the same color in our great room. And she was like, no, go for it. So um, anyway, that's the color in our great room, which in some pictures it looks navy, but it's not. It's like a dark gray green. It's really beautiful. I love it. Prairie to Gem, this is the last question, says, your mom is so talented, great to see her in action. How is the garden center holding up without her? Wishing her continuous healing and joy in the journey. You know, they've got a really good team down there right now, and I think that's what's made maybe this whole eh, thing, this whole episode, a little bit easier to handle, is that she trusts the people who are there. Um, they all work hard and do a good job. And, you know, of course, like, she does a lot of the merchandising and things, so that's not happening, like, quite in her like the way she would do it, I guess, but it's in the way somebody else would do it. And that speaks to a different group of people, you know? So it's all, it's all fine. I do think it was one of the best times that time of year, to, if it was going to happen, sure. because I think that they were already done with the spring rush. Mm -hmm. And it, like, if it had happened during spring prep, because that's Whoa. just, I mean, they're just going yeah. 120 miles an hour. Or like Christmas setup. Hour. That's, that's a big yeah, time. Yeah, right. So yeah. I think that she's going to be feeling a lot better by the time mm -hmm. Christmas setup rolls around. And it was kind of during that lull of the summer where it's like, you know, sales are happening, but it's not like the spring, you know, Mother's Day rush. Right. You know? Ooh, that would have been hard. I mean, there's never a great time. But yeah, we were telling her, if it had to happen, you know, words of comfort from us. Yeah. If it had to happen, at least it happened when it was 110 degrees and you get to stay inside. Or like in January. I mean, that's the only other yeah, time right. where, like, if you had to pick right. when it happened. That seems weird to even talk about, but well. yeah, you know. And that's it, you guys, for today's recap video. Anything else? Go plant a tree. Yeah. We went tree shopping yesterday. I posted a picture of you. Picked out 20. Yeah. Yes, we did. <laughs> and they're pretty good size, too. They're like a two-inch caliper or bigger, two they're, and a half. Well, we told you guys we're going to be focusing on getting some shade trees in the grass area. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what we what we did it's yesterday. It's not going to be that exciting because, uh, like, we can just spill it. But, like, we're getting 16 
uh, more of the autumn blaze maples, which we already have planted. Yeah. We're just going to be kind of continuing on with more autumn blaze. Yeah. I think that's going to, you're a little bit worried about I'm it. I'm kind of like, this is your section in a way. I like think it's going to look nice in the future. Aaron's. I think that mm -hmm. they're, cause it's all going to look kind of uniform in that way. Uh -huh. And I think that when you're in from the house or when you're in the grass, I think it's going to look really spectacular that they all look the same. I, I'm just worried that it could look messy if we did a bunch of different things. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You do you. He, Aaron really wants, like, well, one, we both want the, a large section in the center at least saved for the kids to run and play with mm -hmm. friends and be able to play sports. Um, and, but along the edges, we wanted a lot of shade trees and, and kind of spilling into the middle a little bit, but not too far. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if we'll come in and do maybe, like, a few, like, willy-nilly a little bit more because i love that look you know when you can yeah. kind of see through a little bit of a bank of Things trees that are and uniform then... look really nice too like on the west yeah. side you know yeah. you planted the red point red maples points. with mm -hmm. the boxwoods mm -hmm. so there's something to be said for uniformity as well yeah like a kind of a formal when you kind of want it to be look. more like a park look right there yeah i do kind of want it to feel like a park mm -hmm. so you know things evolve and we've had to move trees before so we kind of the... figure What's the other tree that we got for of um, a different type of maple? Pacific Sunset. It is pretty, oh, but it doesn't pretty. get super tall. It's like 30 to 40 maybe? Yeah. Well, I think the I think online it said 25 to 30. Oh, we thought really? about maybe popping them around the Hartley, um, but I have a feeling we're going to put them in the mixed border uh, because they don't get quite tall enough. Like, it's going to be kind of weird. We're going to be planting massive shade trees around our greenhouse here because we just have to. Otherwise, we won't be able to use this structure for a lot of the year because it's just too hot, even with an AC unit in here. It's just too hot. Uh, everything fries uh, in the sun, like on the south side. I have to be super careful. I've had to move so many plants already because leaves are frying uh, if they're too close to the glass. So, and not even too close, like if they're in any sun inside here. So everything is kind of clustered over more on this side. And we just, we want to make this as usable for as long as we can out of the season. So we've thought about doing like big locust trees because they're very dappled in their light. So they'll take the edge off, but they won't provide like deep shade. Right. Uh, we've, t we've talked about a lot of things. So we didn't really land on anything specific well if that tree does get 30 though i'm, I'm st where i'm sitting i can see you know if we planted two right here flanking uh -huh. i you know where the sun is it's not way up in the sky sure of course well, it is higher the in the yeah. in the summer but i still i think even 30 would be high enough yeah and the guy that we were talking to there he he thought they got bigger and that's the thing is that most of the time the the numbers that you see are not accurate. Things always get bigger for us. Well, no, it depends on the plant. If they like it in yeah, that spot, that's true. they'll get bigger. But the nice thing about the Pacific Sunset, we noticed, because we walked the whole entire lot, which, how many acres is that? Oh, it was probably like 100 acres. Or... We walked for a long time. We walked up and down rows. This maple, they were really well branched, and they were deep green yeah, still. Yeah, like, like a real deep green. I think real they're dark an green. Acer truncatum and an Acer sacrum. I'm not sure. They're a hybrid maple, and the fall color is just, they're seed, I think they're seedless. And um, they just the deep green, which, you know, a lot of our stuff so suffers from chlorosis, or they just are a lighter color green, and these looked gorgeous, so... We'll see what happens. Anyway, we'll show you those. Those are going to be delivered tomorrow. Friday. Yeah. Tomorrow. Um, so we'll get them in the ground. We'll have the auger come hopefully on Monday, and we'll get them in the ground next week, and we'll show you guys. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you're having a great day. Have a great week, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.